Black Widow, issue number eight. That's right, folks. Right before the movie comes out, we get one final issue of this Black Widow story. And this book has been really good. You know, I've been a huge fan of Kelly Thompson since she popped onto the scene. And Casa Grande's artwork just continues to impress me at every turn. I love what they're able to do. And I, you know what? At this point, I haven't seen the Black Widow movie. So I, uh, I, I'm not going to talk about it here. I'll talk about it when it comes out. But I'm just like, okay. Let's see what a Black Widow comic can bring me. I've liked every issue so far. The artwork is super cool. And this issue, while kind of lackluster in certain areas, especially this second part of the story, I think the first arc of this book was really strong when we focused on, like, Natasha's, like, kind of amnesia and this Apogee stuff. It's interesting, but I don't know if it, it has that same impact. It feels like that second arc, like, oh, we got to get to this done before we do the other stuff. I don't know. It's still pretty good, and I still enjoy it. So we open up. Yelena and Natasha are just in San Francisco. Natasha's still thinking about her family that she had with Stevie James there. She sees a kid just playing with his mom and instantly thinks about her own son. And we see that Yelena's kind of like, you know, it's okay to process your grief. If you want to talk about it, we can. And she's like, no, I'm, it's not the time for this. And I, I know I say it all the time, but the artwork in this book, I think, is my favorite on shelves. Like, the blurred backgrounds work so well. The colors are just matted and perfect. The line work is so impressive. I love the way this book looks more than a lot of books on shelves. Honestly, it is gorgeous. So we realize that these two are waiting to talk to Anya, and she shows up, and basically we're just kind of like getting our plan together for what Anya's going to do when she goes to find Apogee. It's kind of fun. It's an interesting idea, and the two of them just hang out. This is the kind of stuff I, I want from a Black Widow book, and it's something that I'm hesitant about when it comes to the movie. I just want it to be an espionage story, you know, like it's spies. We're meeting in public under guises, and we're talking, and we're getting our plan in place. I don't want heavy action action can sometimes be added in the book but i'd rather just be like espionage stuff which i like so we go to see lucy who's kind of freaking out after the puddle of gumby is just there and she's like i do not want that to happen to me if it happens to me i will never be okay and it probably will happen to me and she's really freaking out and we see that natasha is in the doorway while she's talking to herself about this and she's like you know what it's okay everything's gonna be fine with you i promise we will not let bad stuff happen to you like what happened to gumby here which I'm like, that's really nice. I know like all of these kind of Marvel books right now are setting up like a younger generation. I don't think Lucy is going to become like the next thing, like the next young Black Widow or whatever. But I will say that the variant covers for this book, and I think uh, like Marvel right now, they're doing like the Spider-Man villain variant covers. This issue did have Electro on the variant cover. I put it in the thumbnail and then we see that Lucy has some sort of electric power. I'm wondering if this Lucy is going to be connected to the Electro. I'm not sure. Just an idea I had to throw out there. So we got to this place called the Tenderloin. And we get a new art style for this because we're seeing Anya as she is breaking in to see the cult of Apogee and all that stuff. And it's a pretty cool scene. It looks really cool. Anya, again, you're not going to use the character anywhere else. Put her in this book. I think it's completely fine, completely digestible. It's really interesting to see what she's capable of. So she's just basically like, okay, I'm not going to let this freak inject people with more power so them to potentially die. So she webs everything up, throws it out of there. She kind of like loses the, the, the you no. Know, the spy element but she just goes full look well, she's not a spy so i'm okay with it but it's like she loses the the spy element and just kind of goes crazy in there takes all like the fluids that you could use to inject people with the powers and gets out of there she's like well my cover's blown but at least nobody else got injected with the power which is a good thing for her she's like i did something right there so that's that's a positive and she's like i i guess i can't be a spy <laughs> which i'm like yeah you don't need to be a spy you can be the field agent for whatever these other two are doing so Natasha and Lucy are just kind of talking. They're trying to figure out information because the name we got in the last issue was Voss and Voss is this guy that kind of like worked for Apogee, whatever it is. And we're trying to figure out like a pseudonym for him. We learn like he's like this guy with like a beard and some man bun. Of course, that's what he looks like. And we're trying to figure out like a location of places that he could be operating from and working out of. And again, this is what I want to see from a spy book. I don't need the hardcore action. I'm I'm making this statement right now because this comes out before the movie. I haven't seen the movie, but every trailer from the movie leads me to believe that's going to be an action movie and not a spy movie. That upsets me, but we'll have to wait and see. So we're doing some research. We're like, okay, well, maybe this building here at Hux Advisors LLC 
and this could be like the location that Voss is operating out of because it's an anagram for his name of Aldrich Lex Voss. So we see like the address that it's under is where Yelena went that evening. So the idea is now in place. Okay, Natasha's got to go in and save Yelena, which looks great. Again, every issue has like that splash page where Yelena or Natasha are fighting some of these villains. It looks great. We get some great colors of like red in some of the issues and blue in some of the issues. This one is just like a sonic sound wave where like the the panels all come out in like this spiral and it looks so gorgeous. Absolutely amazing to look at. This entire issue is so good. I, I, th this artwork is so gorgeous. It just leaves me breathless every time I see it. So there's this one kind of nerdier guy there that Tasha doesn't kill. She just kind of puts him on like a parachute and tosses him out the window. And then she comes back there because she's going to go save Yelena. But this person that we don't really see who they are. It, again, it's like another electric kind of powered person shocks Yelena while she's there. And we see that that's where the book ends. And potentially, potentially, Yelena Belova is going to be dead. But don't imagine she is because she's got that uh, Winter, uh, Winter Guard and the Red Guardian book that she's co-starring in. And then she's going to be in a movie. <laughs> we have to we have to let her take over from Natasha at some point. So it's a good issue. Again, this run is very mixed. I think when it comes to like this part of the story, the Apogee stuff is still getting there, I think. But the espionage was really interesting in this book. I think it worked really well. The colors are just gorgeous. I could stare at this. I could stare at this book all day. I could look at the artwork and just be impressed by what I'm seeing. I think there's some really cool stuff about that. And it's just very enjoyable. And this book continues to impress me. I think it's a fun read, a solid outing for Natasha. I like that Kelly Thompson is just willing to be like, yeah, we're not going to do a big story. We don't have to make an outlandish story when it comes to Black Widow. You're here for that character. So that's what we're going to work with. So I, I like that a lot. And I'm curious to see if there's going to be a connection to Electro or not. I'm not holding my breath for it, but it's possible. So, Black Widow issue number 8. I am going to give a 7 out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.